Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Danielle Mapes. I am the founder and director of coaching at the Real Estate Prescription Coaching Network, and I am here today with a very special guest. Her name is Cassie Purdy out of Fort Collins, Colorado. Cassie, how are you today? Good. How's it going? Fantastic. Thank you for taking <laughs> some time to be with us today. Um, yes, thank you. Yeah. So Cassie, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and then we're going to get into some live group coaching with Cassie. Cassie is going to be developing a small team. She wants to know a little bit more about like how to look at her budget model for this year and her profit margin and actually plan for future growth. So before we get into that, Cassie, tell us a little bit about your local area and, you know, maybe some experience in real estate, things like that. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. This is my eighth year in real estate. So I started back in 2015 and um, I'm born and raised in Colorado. I grew up on a farm just outside of Denver. And then uh, now I live with my husband and our two boys. I have a two-year-old and a one-year-old. I'm totally outnumbered by boys in my household. I have two boy dogs, two boys and my husband. Um, but we live just outside of Fort Collins in a town called Windsor. And uh, we moved up here about five years ago and we absolutely love it. It's a great, great town. Um, and yeah, we love, we love it. <laughs> so, so Cassie, tell us a little bit about your vision for the future. Where are you kind of like, uh, volume wise? What do you expect? If you stayed, everything stayed the same right now. What do you expect your 2023 year to look like? Uh, if it stayed how it was right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I'm going to end this year about 20 million in, in volume, I guess, um, just a single agent this year, last year, I had a team, I had three buyers agents, um, but really no admin role in that <laughs> and just kind of pieced it together. Cause I was pregnant and I thought it was a good idea to get some help. Um, and it turned out to be a really, really difficult thing for me. Um, it was, it was a super stressful year, uh, because I was not only managing a team, but I was also managing my own real estate business, plus having a baby, and it was just a lot. It was honestly the most stressful year of my life. So I'm a little bit scared of teams and, you know, uh, hiring and all of that, just because it, I mean, it just fizzled out towards the end of last year, but it was, it was kind of traumatic <laughs> for me mm -hmm. because it was so stressful because I was, I was carrying the net of the whole team had no support and, um, you know, it just didn't work out. So uh, so this year I was like, I'm doing it on my own. I don't care like what I have to do. So I do have, um, a couple of showing agents that I pay like on a showing by showing basis. So I pay them like a hundred bucks to go show a property. Um, so I do have a little bit of support for that, which was good, especially the beginning of the year. One time I had like 14 under contract <laughs> together and it was insane. And there was no way that I could get, I could do all the showings and do all the things. Um, and then I do have a TC right now who is phenomenal. And, um, she, she was remote. She's now back in town and, uh, she does write my contracts for me and writes inspection objections and she's licensed realtor. Um, so she helps me out in a big way. She actually gets in my email and helps me out. So she's a little bit more than just a, your standard TC. She kind of, um, helps me out with a little admin stuff as well. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I'm pretty much solo. I pretty much handle everything, um, which is a lot. <laughs> and obviously having two small kids, um, I, you know, I'm working a lot and I'm, and I'm also, I've, I've gotten to the point where I work, I work every day. So the days that I have to take off because my kids are sick or because, uh, something is happening with my family. I need to be there. Then I find myself feeling guilty that I'm not still working. And so I've kind of, that's why I started coaching with Danielle and why I want to do this 2023 planning, um, because I want to figure out a way to put together a new team, a better team, and also put together a different schedule that allows me to, um, have days off mm -hmm. and not feel guilty about that, not feel the guilt. Well, that. and let's be clear. You want days off, but you also have big goals. You've got mm -hmm. really big goals for yourself. You want to build an empire of sorts where you're able to have a nice real estate portfolio, passive income, and the freedom and ability to also give back to the community and support all your, all your dreams, right. Of, of things. Exactly. That, yeah. And you yeah. need money for that. Right. But you don't want to sacrifice time on the way there because you're also in this precious stage of having young kids. 
Um, and this is a dilemma that a lot of realtors and especially a lot of women realtors find themselves in. And so we're going to break this down a bit. Now, if you all, um, this is a huge topic and Cassie and I are going to cover a few videos in this series together for you. You're going to get them once a week on our Facebook group. But if you want more information like this, I want you to make sure if you're finding us on YouTube or you, you get this emailed to you, make sure that you add yourself to the data-driven Real Estate Agents Models for Success Facebook page, because that is the vehicle that we use to get these bits of coaching out there. Yes, I run a coaching program. Yes, Cassie is a student in it, but we also give free pieces of information um, as we are able to, to help support the entire realtor community. So get on that page, invite your friends, introduce yourself um, and ask questions and you'll get information. So Cassie, there's so much to unpack in what you said. We're gonna handle it one piece at a time. So our first video is gonna be, how do you actually plan for growth? Um, but a few tidbits I wanna just kind of pull out of what you said is, number one, I wanna commend you for your bravery because many, many, many people start a team and it doesn't go so well because it's the first time out the gate, right? That you're trying to do this. And there's a big myth in uh, the real estate community that in order to start a team, all you really need is a handful of salespeople and a lot of charisma, right? Like that's the myth. And so people prematurely build teams and they can make a few key mistakes. And we're going to talk about these. Number one, they don't base it on an admin centered model. Okay. The best salespeople have fantastic operations people at their core. Number two, it's not about attracting licenses where people are like, Hey, you know, I really want to come and join you. I want to learn from you. Right. There is a vetting process that needs to go in place. We cast a wide net and we, first of all, we only take salespeople after we have other positions established, meaning an administrative position or at least a transaction coordinator like what you have. Um, some people opt for a showing agent. Uh, some do not like that model. I happen to love that model, but I also recommend a showing agent who may potentially want to grow into the buyer agent role that allows you to grow really organically. Um, but I love having a showing agent, especially if you are a single agent with an admin, because showing houses can easily keep you in the car six to eight hours a day, some days. Right. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, um, number one, you're brave, right? And you're deciding, you know what? It didn't really work the first time, but I know that I need more balance in my life and I want to pursue this again, but this time with purpose and intention, right? Right. And number two, you're smart. You want to be proactive with your finances. So we're that's what we're going to get into today. So Cassie, let me ask you a few background questions. You already have a TC in place that does some admin work. Uh, would you mind sharing us what you believe your annual budget would be for that person in that position in 2023-ish? Can be ballpark. Um, well, she just raised her weight. We did it on a per transaction basis this year. Okay. Um, so 40 transactions times she's going to charge me a 650 now. So 25,000, 26,000. So 600, 650 a transaction is her rate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is high. That's a high rate, but we're going to, it is high because she does more than just, um, I mean, I guess if I were to, to fill, yeah, you're that's exactly what that. I was wondering is, is so yeah. by doing more, you're telling me that what she probably handles some of the listing prep, you know, she does all that MLS input. Um, she does sets up the showing service. She sets up, um, she sends out, actually, I have a program that has, um, all the, all the steps of the transaction, um, that I got her. It's called my work alley. Um, it was set up by a realtor, but it's for every transaction. So basically some of it's auto emails, but they're all, so everything, all the transactions go smoothly. And with okay. That. So a transaction coordinator for everybody watching typically will handle something from when it's under contract to closing, right? What I'm hearing you say is that she'll do for 650 a file, she'll work the buyer side and the list side, and she'll do it from the moment they are ready to sign a contract all the way mm -hmm. through closing. So she'll help you even solidify that relationship and then get the ball rolling. She does. Well, she doesn't have any uh, contact with my sellers or buyers. Only I do, but she does do my listing agreements and my buyer's agreements Okay, and, and MLS input and all of that. So, and y'all just so you know, this is a licensed individual. So Cassie, when she's yes. saying that, you know, if you're, if you're going to have someone actually prep your contracts, number one, you got to look them over yourself. And number two, they have to be licensed. 
Okay. And mm -hmm. I make sure your broker knows about it, but that's a, she's yeah. a unicorn. She's a unicorn in that she does the TC work. She does some admin work. She's licensed. I mean, she's kind of the whole, the whole nine yards. So, okay. So we've got our TC and then mm -hmm. in terms of a showing agent, um, you and I discussed the possibility of 10 or 15% of, of gross commission income when, mm -hmm. um, when it closes, are you leaning towards one more than the other? 10 or 15. Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Um, what's your average sales? What's your average sales price, Cassie? Uh, 550. Okay. 550. Okay. So if it were 10%, they would end up making, uh, whoops, let me get my calculator out. It's probably 2.8. Um, a 2.8 commission. Three. Yeah. Sometimes we get three, sometimes we get 2.5. So it probably averages out to about 15,000. Yeah, I see that. Okay. So at 2.8% with an average sales price of 550,000, we're looking at $15,400 is the average GCI per transaction. So if you did 15%, when they show that buyer and then you guys close, it would actually be 2310 a unit. And if you hit 40 units, let's say um, you hit 40 units, 20 of them are on the buy side, then we're actually, whoops, 23, 10 times 20. Yeah, that's $46,000 uh, in annual income just to be a showing agent. So I'm going to recommend we start at 10%. Okay. okay. All right. So, all right. So we're going to use the 10% figure for the showing agent. And what we're going to do is kind of understand what is Cassie's current budget model and then where do we need to go in order to have the money and the reserves to start attracting and retaining talent to start building out her team and for the team we're looking at her transaction coordinator and a showing agent cassie my my question to you is do you have any major administrative gaps in your business with that tc in place is there something major that needs to happen administratively that she doesn't do yeah <laughs> okay. Like so, whole business. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So let's do, let's create a job description right now for that missing person on your team. Yeah. So what's the first thing that comes to mind that you want to get off your plate, but your TC is not able to pick up? Um, I would say like, well, my TC does do some emails, but not all of my email, email admin, I guess. Okay. So monitoring emails that are coming in from clients and leads and and kind of prioritizing like what's important and what's junk and unsubscribing me. I have 43,000 unread emails. In my <laughs> it's a lot. Inbox, so it's a lot. I have okay. a problem. Okay. So here's what, you, here's what I think we need in a way is almost a personal assistant, right? Mm -hmm. Who is okay. Oh, yeah. Who is okay dipping their hands into the real estate side of things. Okay. So um, we've got uh, email monitoring. Okay. Um, and then what else? What else is is kind of rearing its head in your world that your TC can't do or won't do? I mean, I don't know if this would be good for an admin person, but like a kind of like a runner job, like a sign runner and lockbox runner. Yeah. Kind of thing. I do spend time on that. Um, someone to go to my listing photo appointments and um, be there for that. Cause I, I'm kind of a freak about that because I get if I don't go, then I get the photos back and there's like a crooked pillow or there's, you know, something mm -hmm. is they left the trash can in the middle of the kitchen or something, you know? So I always go to those usually. And that's where I, what would it look I like? have to what, go to those. What, so. it, what would it look like if, if we actually gave that task to your showing assistant, because your showing assistant already mm -hmm. has a vested interest in seeing the property before it hits the market. Right. Mm -hmm. So what if your showing assistant met the photographer for, okay for an additional fee or for an, a 2% extra split on GCI, you know, 2% of that listing or whatever, 2% of your GCI on that listing. Um, yep. So that's one option. Okay. Uh, runner, I think could easily be the personal assistant as well. Okay. okay. Um, there are companies that do runners um, in terms of the real estate signs, you're going to want to ask in your area because um, there's quite often like companies or people who will actually hold your panels and place your signs. So if you don't, do you have someone doing that right now already? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would look into, I would ask the top five agents in your area that run big businesses. Hey, you know, who do you use to place your signs? Okay. Okay. Um, and then you may want to also ask them, do you have a runner? And where did you find your runner? Okay. Um, okay. But in the meantime, I think if we were to bring someone on part-time as a personal assistant, 
you've got your TC, um, a showing agent is going to be a little bit harder to find. They're going to be a diamond in the rough, somebody who really wants to be a part of the sales experience, but not have the responsibility. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, we, and we've kind of dug in a little bit out of order here, but I think it's actually really important for us to flesh out these roles. Um, so number one, know what kind of candidate is going to excel and want to stay in that role. And by stay in that role, I don't mean forever, but make sure it's a good job fit. Okay. So the people who are going into the ops or admin side are looking for more stability, more, um, you know, the same tasks every day, following things to completion every day. Right. And then the people who are a little bit more, um, people oriented instead of task oriented. They like to be out in the houses. They like to be around the people. Um, those people are in the sales side of the business and showing agent is in the sales side of the business, but they're different in that they are, they don't want the opportunity of, of endless income, but all the responsibility of a salesperson. They actually want the opportunity to slowly wade into those waters and still be, you know, fed in a way, and they're willing to accept a lower income for it. So each position on a team is going to have a profile. And, and so it's good to know, uh, are people task oriented or people oriented? Are they looking for opportunity or stability? Do they like the same kind of structure every single day, or do they like to fly in the wind and be creative? These are all different characteristics of each one of those positions. Number one, you need goodness of fit with the position like we just talked about. And number two, you need to cast a wide net. If you want a team that has 1% talent, you need to actually have 100 applicants to find the top one. <laughs> okay, so, so think about it that way, guys. If you want top grade A talent, then you need to have a wide net so that you can actually find that unicorn, right? But let's do this. Um, bef so after you pay your expenses, after you pay your cost of sales, okay? Money just for Cassie. Cassie and Cassie's family. What is that number? Um, after everything, probably 500,000. I would okay. not, yeah. Okay, so, and is that before or after taxes? Um, after. After taxes. Absolutely. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, we're what, do you know what percentage you're comfortable with for your taxes? I usually use 33%, which is high, but I'd rather, I'd rather have money at tax refund time than owe money. So what number do you want to use? Is 33% okay? Sure. Yeah. You okay. All right. 500,000 divided by 0. 0.66, cause it's your portion that you're keeping is okay. 757,575. So that okay. would be before taxes. Mm -hmm. After taxes, it will leave you with 500,000. Got it? Yep. Okay. Now you're at EXP, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So your cost of sale is $16,000. That's pretty much it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that brings yeah, us- I mean, there's a, there's a $250 per fee, transaction fee after you cap, but I, that's, that's fine. Minimal. That's nice. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. How, how much do you believe your, and let's just go off of this year. What are your business expenses for this year? And I know you used to do Zillow. So we're going to take that out, take out Zillow, take out coaching. Like take them out. Like don't keep don't them, as include part them of in that. your number. Nope. Cause you don't pay okay. them anymore. Right. You've, okay. right. You're one and done with the real estate prescription. You don't pay it ever again for us. And then you, you're not paying for Zillow. So um, right. Yeah. So what is your, what is your budget for business expenses without those two things? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, it's a lot less. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously I have to pay, um, I don't know, especially doing, doing my marketing the way that I'm doing it through your program. Like it's very, very inexpensive, but I still have to pay obviously MLS dues and uh, realtor dues and, um, things like that. So I don't know, I, I guess we could put like five grand a month or something reasonably. Okay. All right. So we were at $500,000 after taxes. So before taxes, $757,000, right. Plus the 16,000 mm -hmm. that's going to go to EXP. That brings us to 773. Okay. And then we're going to add another 60 on there for your whole year's business expenses. Okay. So okay. let me pull my calculator out here. And if y'all want to go through this process with your own business, I have a video 
that we are going to post um, in the comment section called Bulletproof Your Business. And I recommend that you go ahead and watch that because you can follow the formulas yourself. So Cassie, we're looking at 833, 575, okay? okay. Is your gross commission income goal, okay? If you divide that by your gross commission per transaction, which is 15,400, we're looking at 54 homes, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. So our goal is 54 homes. Now, the part that I wanna get crystal clear on here is um, what do we need to do in order to add in now your, your showing agent and your personal assistant, okay? So those are going to be, the, your personal assistant will probably be operate, uh, an operating expense because you're going to want them to come same day, every day, right? And go through the same process. Right. So they're going to be an employee, okay? okay? All right. Now your showing agent is going to be an independent contractor. They get paid by the brokerage, a split, okay? So Cassie, how many buyers and how many sellers do you have? Uh, is it 50-50 in your business or do you have more sellers? I probably have more buyers. Um, it's probably like 60, 40, 60, 40. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, let's do this. How much do you anticipate budgeting for a personal assistant? Um, part-time. Okay. Yep. Part-time. I don't know. Do they normally get paid by salary or hourly? I would definitely pay hourly. Okay. Um, salary, so, salary makes sense if you're doing full-time and you want someone to respond kind, kind of morning, evenings, weekends. Um, mm -hmm. but because we want that work-life balance and their job is going to be like, here are the five things I need you to do today. They're just going to crank them out and do them. Right. So I would do hourly. Um, and okay. don't worry about your answer because we can always, we can always adjust, right? Yeah. You want to pay enough to get a real quality person, but not so much that you end up with a bad business model. So what do you okay. feel like would be a realistic hourly rate that you would like to pay a personal assistant? Probably at least like 20, 25 an hour. Okay. So let's go with 22 an hour. Okay. Okay. Um, and 20 hours a week. Is that mm -hmm. what we want to do? Okay. 22 Perfect. times yeah. 20. That's 440 a week times okay. 52 weeks. Cause we're going to give them two weeks of vacation. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. So that's $22,880. All right. Now, because you're going to have some additional taxes and stuff on top of that, mm -hmm. I'm actually going to round this up. And I'm, I'm always um, fiscally conservative. I want to plan for you to spend more and have less at the end of the year. And if you get more, you know, after taxes, great. Um, let's round it up to 40. Because okay. you're going to make quarterly payments on their Medicare, Social Security, things like that. So we're going to call it $40,000 is your budget item uh, to okay. bring on your personal assistant. Okay. So that brings us to 873.575. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get crystal clear on how many units that would be. So, so 873.575 divided by 15,400. Sorry, 57, 57. I knew something okay. was off there. Okay. So, yeah. So you sell three more houses and you get to pay for your personal assistant. Okay. Not too shabby, right? No. Okay. So 57 houses is where we're at. And we said that 60% of them were going to be buyers, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So 57, 57 times 60% is 34.2. So 35 buyers. Okay. And then 22 listings. Okay. Okay. So we also said that you were going to pay your showing agent, right? So what we need to do is uh, 10%, right? Is going to go towards your showing mm -hmm. agent. So instead of doing 35 buyers, what we're going to do is we're actually going to add 3.5 more units onto that because okay. that's what you're going to end up paying your showing agent is 10% of that GCI, right? Okay. So, so 35 units, 10% of it needs to go to your, uh, your showing agent. So we're going to actually raise that 35 by 110%. So that's 38.5, which brings us to 39. 
Okay. okay. So if you sell 39 homes, you're going to get paid as if you sold 35 because okay. four of those are going to go directly to the showing agent. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So that brings us to 39 buyers and 22 listings for a total of 61 units. Okay. Okay. That means we're aiming for six closings a month, knowing that we might fall short. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so why don't you go ahead and share with me now that we've been through the numbers a little bit, you know, do you, what kind of ahas do you have about this process? Um, well, I like that you're conservative because I'm definitely not. <laughs> I'm like the opposite of that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it'll be fine. We'll just, well, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so that's good as far as budgeting. I've actually never like put the numbers together. You know what I mean? I just, mm -hmm. I'm just like a fly by my seat kind of person as far as transactions and stuff. So well, it's good and to see it. You're, you're running a really big business with a lot of money flowing in and out. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you don't control it, if you don't know exactly where you're going, the ship can go, you know, the other direction really, really quickly. Right. And I'm going to, I'm going to share with you my story about that. Um, I actually was running a massive business and we started to really invest in lead generation. And I brought on an admin and showing agent. We did all this. Um, and then we had a dry quarter <laughs> and that was fun. Uh, so I went from super profitable to $30,000 in debt overnight. And I'm like, oh God, what happened? And it's because I wasn't watching my PNL. I wasn't watching my profit and loss. And when you are moving a big ship like this, one thing gets neglected over 30 to 45 days. And now you're digging yourself out of a hole, right? And you can't do that when you've got people in your world, because if they don't get paid, you don't get paid. Like, you know what I mean? You have to pay them before you get anything that's left over. So any kind of error we have is going to hit you in your household, or it's going to cut your team and your members will go off and now you've got to rebuild again. So we have to be very, very proactive on the money side. Um, so what was your goal before we had this conversation unit wise for 2023? At least three a month and then mm -hmm. at least 30,000 a month, mm -hmm. um, which isn't enough if I'm going to pay somebody. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's kind of my problem in my business right now is I've gotten to the same problem as you this year mm -hmm. where I'm mm -hmm. super profitable at the beginning of the year, not even keeping track of what subscriptions I had, what I had going on just because I didn't need to. It was just like money was just, I mean, I was having hundred thousand dollar months and stuff. And so it's just like, everything's fine until it's not fine or until there's a market shift and mm -hmm. until your pipeline falls apart. And so, and then it's super stressful to have to live for that next closing so that you can pay off your credit card debt from months ago. And it's just, it sucks. So yeah. I want to get off that train. So I am <laughs> going to recommend to you the budget model section from the millionaire real estate agent. Um, it is written by Gary Keller and Jay Papazan and Dave Jenks. Um, Dave passed away this last year. Um, but it, it's an awesome book. Honestly, no matter what brokerage you're at, anybody should read the millionaire real estate agent. It's just fantastic. They also have a, uh, they have it on audible as well. Um, but the budget model has something in it called red light, green light. Okay. And basically what it forces you to do is make your money that you invest work for you before you go and invest anymore. Right. Meaning, you know, this money, I'm going to hold this money accountable. And for me to be able to actually increase it or continue it, it must earn its way. The same goes for people in your world. Right. So, um, so we're going to play red light, green light. And the way that we're going to do that is you're going to get your P and L every single month. Right. And you, you are currently set up with your CPA to do that. Yes. Yes. Now I am. Okay. Yeah. So there's a few things worth noting in this formula that Cassie and I did. One would be her profit margin now. And the other one would be her profit margin if we follow this model. So let's break it down really quick. This last year, Cassie, um, what would you say? What did you say you sold this last year? Um, you said 20 million, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So 20 million in GCI times, uh, we've got 0 0.028 for commission, 560,000 in GCI. Is that accurate? Yeah. Okay. Now okay. let's, let's just say we had 16,000 in cost of sale. And then you, would you say 
that uh, right now, as it stands without Zillow and without coaching, your operating expenses were about 60,000, 5,000 a month. Is that accurate? Well, it was much higher this year. Like, are you talking about? But if you take Zillow, if you take Zillow and coaching out, are we near 60 or is it more than that? Um, that's probably, yeah, that's somewhat accurate. Okay. Okay. So what we've got here is what we're going to do is we're going to divide your cost of sale, which is 16,000. We're going to divide that by 560. Okay. So 16,000 divided by 560,000 is only 3%. Your cost of sale is only 3%. Okay. What that means is that's money that was in your GCI that you never saw because it went to the brokerage, right? As you grow your team, that cost of sale is going to rise because you're going to be never seeing the money that goes to the showing agent, right? Mm -hmm. Or a buyer's agent or whatever. That money is GCI, but it never hits your account. So that money, that part of your money will go up, okay? Okay. Um, Then operating expenses, let's take a look at those. So we've got 60, oops, uh, $60,000 divided by, $560,000 $560,000 is 11%. Okay? okay. So at a 3% cost of sale and an 11% operating expenses, that's a total of 14%. And what that means is you are at an 86% profit margin. Okay. That's very, very high. That's yeah. very high. Um, I have two suspicions. Number one, I have suspicions that our operating expenses are probably higher than 60000 No, they definitely were this year. This year, yeah, they, with the Zillow, I mean, the Zillow leads, I was paying 11, 10, 11, a thousand a month uh, for most of the year. But you're not, um, but you're not paying that now. So that's why we're starting fresh here. Right. Right. So, okay. All right. So the good news is you have a very high profit margin, but this is why we started this conversation is Cassie asked me, what does the profit margin need to be uh, what, in order for me to actually plan to have a team, like when I have a team, what is my profit margin going to look like for most people? It's 40%. Okay. You might get higher than that. If you're super duper low on expenses and you don't pay for lead generation, which Cassie has been trained on how to lead generate for free. And she's going to train her people the same way. So she's never going to buy a paid lead again, ever. (laughs) Okay. You may have a higher profit margin as a team than other teams do. You could be at 50%, which is a lot of money when you're selling a lot of real estate. Um, So let's look at what we planned for. Let's look at what we planned for, for your, um, your profit margin. We talked about a gross commission income of eight, let's just call it 834,000. And actually we kind of changed, we talked about 61 units. Yes. Yeah. So 61 times one, five, four, zero, zero. That's actually, um, 939,000 is really what you're aiming for. Let's call it 940 because that would allow for you to have your showing agent and your personal, uh, assistant. So 940,000 is the GCI. Okay. We decided that our operating expenses were $60,000 plus $40,000 for your new personal assistant. So that's $100,000. Okay. Okay. So $100,000 for operating expenses. And then your cost of sale is going to be your $16,000 plus it's going to be 10% of your commission on the buy side. Okay. For your showing, for your showing agent. Yeah. That was my question. Is the showing assistant just for buyers then? typically? Uh, Yes. Now, once we get all this settled, if I were you, I would consider, uh, I would consider paying them. Um, also for anything on the list side that requires you to be there other than the listing appointment. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we'll figure that out. That's almost like a small tweak compared to the Mm -hmm. big picture. So uh, $15,400 is your GCI per transaction. Okay. We're going to times that by the 39 buyers we think we need to take now. And that's, okay. that's $600,000 in commission that's coming just from the buy side. When you okay. times that by 10%, which is what we said we were going to pay the showing agent, your showing agent is going to be making $60,000 a year okay. just to show homes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we've got $60,000 a year plus $16,000 a year. We've got a total of 76,060, which is your cost of sale. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. So we had $100,000 uh, 
$100,000 in operating expenses. We're going to divide that by your GCI of your goal, which is $940,000. And you're at 10% for operating expenses. Okay. Yeah. Now we have $76,060, uh, which is your operating expenses. I'm sorry, your cost of sale. I did I screw it up there? I think I did. So no, you had okay. okay, so you had a hundred thousand dollars, which was your operating expenses. Okay. Right. You're gonna divide that by nine hundred and forty thousand, which is your GCI goal, including mm -hmm. all those new people, and you got a ten percent. Uh, ten percent of your GCI is going towards the operating expenses. Okay. In terms of your cost to sale, you have the money to your brokerage, and then you've got your showing assistant. Altogether, that's seventy six thousand dollars. Okay, so you take that seventy six thousand dollars and you divide it by nine hundred and forty thousand, and you're at eight percent for cost of sale. Okay. So even now, you're at eighteen percent between the two of those, which leaves you with 82% profit margin. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's where red light, green light comes in. And this is, we're going to have to break this into part one and part two for people. Cause this is a long yeah. video. This is, it's hard. It's hard to create little mini ones out of this. Cause everything kind of ties together. Yeah. Um, but, but okay. So once you know your profit margin, what you can do is you can say, until I actually make enough money to earn the right to a team, I cannot start a team. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you need to start living now, like you have a team in order to have the money to be able to bring on a team and know that everyone will get paid. So mm -hmm. what you do is you start living by your profit margin. Okay. So instead of taking 86%, of your GCI as owner's profit, you are now going to be taking 82. Okay. I would like you to be really fiscally conservative and learn to live off 75%. Okay. I can do that. Okay. So what that means is $10,000, right? GCI comes in. Mm -hmm. The broker takes their part. The mm -hmm. rest hits your business checking account. Okay. So for you, uh, let's say it's a $10,000 commission. EXP is going to get $2,000. You're going to get... Oh, you know, one thing we missed is the TC cost out of... Is the TC not... It's not included in your um, in your operating expenses, the $60,000? It happens at closing. Like the title company takes it out, but it takes it comes off of my GCI, I guess, right? Yeah. So the title company... Who pays the TC, the broker or you? The title company disperses three checks. So one to me, one to my TC and one to EXP for every closing. But who is yeah. actually paying the TC? Is the client? See, it comes out of my, no, it comes out of my commission. Okay. So. so, so I want you to, first off, I want you to go back to your CPA and ask them, do I owe my transaction coordinator a 1099 this year? Okay. Because if it's, if the title company is paying them on behalf of the client, you don't have an expense, you just make less commission. But if the title company is cutting a check to them on your behalf, you're oh. going to need to do a 1099 for her, right? Um, because it's actually your business expense. You're just not cut. It's not coming out of your bank account. So you're going to want to make sure you talk to the, the tax person because typically they'll see it come out of your bank account. And they'll mm -hmm. go, oh, Cassie can deduct that. It's mm -hmm. a business expense. And then the other side is she now needs to pay taxes. So you need to give her a 1099. But if the money never comes through your account, your CPA doesn't even know it exists. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it just comes. It comes from the title company to my TC. So they don't ever see it. So you're going to want to explain it to your CPA and then ask them what they want you to do about it. Okay. okay. The money right. never comes into my account though, but it would be considered a cost of sale, right? My TC um, fee. It, it depends if, if it truly is never actually like if it's, if the money is literally going from the client to the title company, to the TC, you're actually not involved at all. Right. Yeah, that's what's um, happening. That, yeah. that would be a cost of sale. If the okay. title company is taking Cassie Purdy's money and you have said to them, just cut her a check for 625 out of my side it actually should be coming into your account, getting deducted as a business expense, and then you 1099 her. 
right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's just set up a little funky and I just want you to ask more questions. Make sure you Voxer me about it later and we'll make sure that you get the answers that you need. But so 625, a transaction is what we're talking about, right? It, yeah, it used to be 500. It was 500 this whole year and now it's 650. So okay. she just upped it. Okay, 650 and it's buyer and seller are 650. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's not included in your 60,000 of expenses, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So 650, we've got how many units? 61 units. 61. Okay. That's $40,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whether it's on cost of sale or not, doesn't really matter. If you hit your, if you hit your goal, it's going to be $40,000, 40,000 divided by 940 is 4%. So actually and this is why we're always fiscally conservative because remember how I told you to live off 75%? Mm -hmm. Well, 82 minus four, you're actually looking at a 78% profit margin, which is way more realistic to me. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So if you learn to live off of 75 or 70, you will never have a month where you're biting your fingernails, wondering what's going to happen. Okay. okay. I think that's easily doable. Yeah. Okay. So let's go back to how do we use this information? to actually make sure that not only are we doing the production that's going to build the, the revenue to handle that kind of team, but that we're starting to learn how to live within those limits, right? Because when you're a single agent, money comes in and you're like, oh, I'm going to do this with it. I'm going to do that with it. Once we're mm -hmm. running a business where we have a budget and people to pay, it's a completely different ballgame. We have to get very disciplined when it comes to the money. So in the future, you want to sell a million dollars of real estate in order to actually get 737 to show up on your income statement for you after all expenses, and then keep $500,000 after taxes, right? Mm -hmm. Now, actually, this is kind of, this is math, but it's magical, right? Um, do you remember how we said it was like $740,000 was what we were going to um, keep uh, before taxes? Yeah. Well, yeah, if you have a million dollars and you have a 75% profit margin, that's $750,000. Yeah. So it lines up exactly, right? With with what we've just done, the math kind of double checks itself. So okay. if you want to bring in a million dollars so that 750 hits your account after expenses and then you pay the government, you end up with 5, we have a 75% profit margin, which means when you get a $10,000 check, how much money actually belongs to you? 7,500. Only 7,500, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just say that you're at the point uh, where you're paying into your cap with EXP. $10,000 GCI. 2,000 goes to EXP. 650 is going to go to your TC right away, right? And then you've got this little bit of buffer that's going to go towards any other operating expenses. Mm -hmm. You get to take $7,500 into your personal account, and then you pay taxes on that. So you put away 2,500. Okay. Now you keep 5,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. And our goal was to keep 500,000. So you just need to do that a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> now yeah. your, your price point is higher. So, yeah, yeah. okay. Now your price point is, uh, is it's 15,400, right? So the example we used was 10,000. Well, one and a half times that is mm -hmm. 15,000. Okay. So, mm -hmm. um, so everything we just said, money-wise, that's 7,500, one and a half times that is going to be closer to 10,000. So uh, if you go ahead and I know this is confusing to teach on Zoom, 15,400 is your average. We're going to show that. Mm -hmm. That's your average GCI per transaction. You times it by your profit margin. That's how much money you get to put in Cassie Purdy's account. The yeah. rest of it belongs somewhere else in your business. Okay. okay. Then additionally... You're going to take that much and put it in your estimated tax account immediately. Okay. Okay. So, so that's how it works um, in terms of the money movement. Cost of okay. sale is going to come out right away. You're going to go back to the GCI number and pull 75% out and put it in your personal account, leave the rest into your business. Okay. And then you're going to take 33% of what hits your account. Okay. If you learn to live this way, what's going to happen is you don't currently have a personal assistant. That money is going to stay in your business checking. Okay. You don't currently have a showing agent. That money is going to stay in your business checking. So what will happen is you're starting to prime yourself financially 
for being able to support those people. And it's going to build up three to six months of reserves in your accounts so that when you hire those people, you have three to six months of reserves. And now you're not worrying about paying them and you not getting paid. Okay. Right. Once we get the finances fiscally in order, the lead generation is the only thing left for us to think about. Mm -hmm. Now we just get consistent with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I know this was a lot of information um, and I can't wait to splice it all and make something out of it because it's going to take some editing, but it's a lot of information. What questions do you have right now that we can go over live and get clarity on? No, I get it. I mean, like it's a lot of math, but I get it. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Can you flip, so your, can you flip your paper for me? Do you have paper you can make notes on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you could flip it and put it on the back, the most important thing is this. Um, average GCI per transaction, mm -hmm. $15,400. Okay. Um, and then you're going to basically what you're going to say is uh, $15,400 times. Do you want to live off of 75% or do you want to live off of 70? 70. Let's do that. Okay. I think that, that's more realistic because my, maybe my operating expenses are lower than what they'll end up being. I don't know. Okay. So, so then I want you to say transfer 70% of GCI to personal checking. Okay. And then this would be the example number. Okay. Okay. And then, and then you're going to transfer 33% of that to your estimated taxes. And this would be the example number. Okay. And actually this is perfect. I have a closing coming up this week. That's, I think 15,400 something is my GCI. So it's perfect. We can put it in practice this week. So yes, we can. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, so that is pretty much how I operate. And okay. if you have a dry month, you're going to be really tempted to steal from your business, mm -hmm. but that is always a short-term solution to a long-term problem. Mm -hmm. The long-term solution is lead generate, lead generate, mm -hmm. lead generate, lead generate, right? <laughs> but if you can learn to live off of 70% of your gross commission income, then you can, then you can survive the dry spells. You can, you know, have the money to hire people because ultimately we're looking to free up Cassie. And the only way we can truly do that is through systems and people. Perfect. Yeah. Cause I think we've talked about team structure, like how they got paid today. Right. And then how to do the flow of money and like financial side of it. So it'd be good to get into actual um, lead generation planning and, mm -hmm. and, you know, annual planning or whatever. So, and, and how do I get to five deals a month? Because that's what I have to do with it, with a smaller budget, with a smaller operating cost. Well, and so here, so you've got say you have lead generation sales and service or the three departments in your business. Always. Mm -hmm. You have to have lead generation so that your, your team has at bats. You have to have sales, but they don't necessarily need to be the lead generation people. Okay. And then you have to have service and they should never be the lead generation and sales people. Service is its own thing, right? Each one of those people has different job descriptions and they have different goals. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lead generation is go out and find the opportunities and warm them up. Sales. Those are like your relief pitcher in a baseball game. Like you're coming in, you're closing the deal. You're coming in, you're closing the deal. Um, and then service is completely different. It doesn't grow the company at all, except for maybe through asking for referrals, which they should always do. Um, mm -hmm. But you need to kind of know what those three departments are. And when you insert yourself into the action, you're in lead generation mode, right? And sales mode. You're going to wear both of those hats at first. Mm -hmm. And that's your job. But bigger than that is this other side of the coin, which is behind the curtain. This is your CEO job. This is your mm -hmm. career, right? So number one, you have to know the CEO side of things and you have to actively monitor and work on getting your business solid, right? As a business owner, not a realtor. Number mm -hmm. two is the daily activity. So you may have weekly or monthly tasks as a CEO that matter, but you have daily activity and that's in sales and lead generation, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And then you leave the ops people to do their job and service. That's their job, not yours. 
Um, but you can't have one without the other. If you lead generate like a monster, but you don't have a business plan, you're going to end up wasting so much money and being stressed out, not having money to pay your people. If you're all business planning and no action, what the heck are we doing? <laughs> right? You've got to have both. Yeah. So, um, okay. So today we did CEO. Next okay. one, we're, we're going to do the daily activity. And then we'll even talk about, you know, how do you get your people into action the right way? Because I know that was kind of a nightmare from last time is we all had plans, but it's like, how do you actually motivate and keep your people on track as a leader without doing it for them? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, Cassie, uh, remind everybody where you are and thank you for your time today. Remind everybody where they can find you and contact Fort, you. Yeah. Fort Collins um, in Denver Metro, Colorado, just a Colorado girl. I'm your girl. I can help you. Um, and you can find me at on Instagram at Cassie Purdy, R-E, um, the letters R and letters E, um, or on Facebook, Cassie Purdy Real Estate. And so. Purdy is P-U-R-D-Y. Uh, yep. So please <laughs> look up Cassie. Um, she is an amazing agent out of Colorado, and I'm thrilled to have her in my program. She's been an absolute delight. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We looked at the CEO aspect of how to go from single agent to a team. What are the different pieces we need to pay attention to? You know, how do you make a good hire? What do you need to plan for financially? How do you start living that way now so that you have the money to make those hires? That's all the CEO aspect of business planning. We broke down Cassie's GCI. We looked at her operating expenses, her cost of sale, and her profit margin, and we used that to help divide every check that comes in so that she's living now like she's running a team. Um, join us next week. We will have a video on how to take strategies and know, we all know how many goal, you know, how many units we want to sell, but how do we start to amend that for different strategies? Some of you like client events, some of you like daily conversation. So how do we take those goals and take a look at three different business models? One that's based on client events that happen less frequently, but with more people. One that's daily conversation, but like less of a huge task. And then a hybrid model. So we're going to look at that in uh, a week. You guys will see that video pop up here. Cassie, thank you so much for your time. I really thank appreciate you. you. This is so helpful. This is stuff you don't learn in, in real estate school or even after years and years of real estate. It's just stuff that you don't learn anywhere else. So super well, helpful. I appreciate it. Thank you for being our guinea pig here. I appreciate your vulnerability and thank you for being brave enough because it helps everyone else admit that we all still have things to learn. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> all right. Bye, Cassie. See okay, you bye. Soon. Thank you. <laughs>